If you were looking to book a cruise and you read reviews like this, this, and this, would you book the cruise? I did. I read all of these reviews before I booked the cruise, but I wanted to get away. I wanted some winter sun. I didn't have a very big cruise budget at the time, and I saw a cruise that was incredibly cheap. It was with a cruise line that I'd never cruised with before, and I thought, what's the worst that can happen? Of course, I did have some concerns at this point. The cruise was a week long, and it involved me flying to Venice. I could completely hate the cruise. A lot of the comments said that I would be bored, said that I would be hungry, but I thought, it's going to be an experience, and that it was. It was an experience. The embarkation process in Venice was incredibly easy. It was fine. No complaints there. The ship that we were boarding was the Costa Luminosa, and as soon as you got on board, you knew that this was going to be unlike any other cruise that you've been on before. It was kind of like, we're not in Kansas anymore, are we, Dorothy? Not at all. Everything you know about cruising, throw it out the window. The first task for us when we got on the cruise ship was to find our cruise cards. It was like a treasure hunt of find your cruise card because your cruise cards are not given to you at check-in, they're just left in your cabin. So you have to find your cabin as soon as you get on board to find your cruise card which is just on the bed in your cabin. I've never been on a cruise like that before and you know that when it starts like that, things are going to be different on this cruise. The decor of the ship was bright and colourful and crazy. I've never seen any other cruise ship since or before quite like that ship. It really didn't take us very long though to run into what could be our first obstacle and the source of many, many, many cruise complaints online, and that is the languages spoken on board. Costa Cruises are an Italian cruise line. The majority of people on there are Italian. You'll also find people who are French, German, Portuguese. You name it, you will find them on a Costa Cruise. A lot of the Costa Costa Cruise complaints relate to languages, and I do understand when you first get on a Costa Cruise, you're very much surrounded by Italian language, Italian everything, and you kind of sit there and you think like, am I going to be able to order a drink? Am I going to be able to read the menus? There's not many people on here who speak English. You also worry a little bit too about how they're going to treat people who speak English. I read a lot of bad reviews before this cruise saying that Americans should beware, or if you're from Britain you shouldn't take a Costa cruise, and I'm happy to say that we never ever had any problems with the language. Everything like the daily schedule and like the menus has been translated into English. Some of the things on the dinner menu, I've never seen that combination of English words before, but they are trying, and if you speak English on a Costa cruise, it's not really a huge problem. There are only 62 British people on this cruise out of, I think, 2,500. There were a few more Americans on there, but we were very much in the minority. The next thing that could be a total deal breaker for people, and I see a lot of complaints about this, is Costa Cruz's smoking policy. So Costa do have designated smoking areas, but that's pretty much the top deck. Pretty much the top deck is the smoking area. They have inside smoking areas too, and the thing that I think gets a lot of people about Costa Cruises is that you can smoke on your balcony. Any passenger can smoke on their balcony, which means you can be sat there watching a sail in or a sail away, and you get a waft of smoke from the balcony below or the balcony to the side. It was just something I was not expecting and not used to, and for a lot of people that is a complete deal breaker. So there I am on this cruise ship that is brighter and more colourful than anything I've ever seen before. I realised that I don't really have to worry about the language at this point, which is a massive relief. The next thing, of course, if you're on a cruise, that your brain turns to is food, is finding food. So at that point we headed to the buffet to get some lunch. I have to say I think this is the first and only time I've been really disappointed with a cruise ship buffet. I don't have huge expectations, but the problem for me was that the food really wasn't at a temperature that I would want to eat. Sometimes you would eat things and you weren't sure if it was a hot food that had gone cold or a cold food that had warmed up, and it didn't really get better throughout the cruise. For the price of the cruise, I'm absolutely amazed that there is any food included at all. But as far as all the cruises that I've been on, the buffet on this cruise was my least favourite and my least favourite by qu quite a while. Another thing for me about the buffet was that it was actually closed a lot of the time. I know, of course, that buffets can close on cruises. There's no problem with that. But for me, I'm used to having dinner and then going and having an evening snack. But the buffet on the Costa Cruise that I was on always closed at half eight. Your Britishism of the week is how we say times. We don't normally say things like, oh, it's 2.45. 
Even then I tried to go into an American accent saying 2.45, we would say, oh, it's quarter to three. It's quarter to three, quarter past three, half past eight, half nine. That's how we say a lot of our times here. The quality of the food in the main dining room was much better than the buffet. I don't remember anything ever being cold in there, which was good. The thing that confused me and it was difficult but we got over it was the fact that the menu is one of those menus where you have five courses or six courses or seven courses or eight courses we were table sharing we were put with some other people who also spoke english so that meant that we kind of had to wait for everybody to finish all of their courses if it was just me and one other person or a couple of other people that i knew i would say right does everybody want to skip course three and we'll just have four courses or something like that but because we were table sharing dinner did go on for two three hours. I think that's an Italian thing. I think people in Italy, their evening is all about eating and it's about people were dancing in the restaurants. It's just very different from what I'm used to. Once we'd finished our dinner, we went on to the buffet and I know what you're thinking, we're not getting more food. We were looking for a cup of tea. Costa Cruises is very strange when it comes to tea and coffee. I'm pretty much used to going on a cruise and whenever the buffet is open, there are tea and coffee making facilities there. You can get water whenever you want from the buffet. But not only did the buffet close a lot, but also tea and coffee wouldn't be there all of the time. I appreciate totally this is me being a British person going on an Italian cruise line, but they had maybe one hour in the afternoon for afternoon tea where you could get tea. When I cruise with Costa again, which I'm sure I will, one of the biggest things I'm gonna do differently is I'm going to get a drinks package, not just for the tea and coffee, but if you're eating dinner in the main restaurant, water is not free. I'm not talking bottled water, I'm talking tap water. There is no free tap water. There is no free way to have anything to drink at dinner on a Costa Cruise. So you're gonna have to buy drinks anyway. We bought kind of a water package that just allowed us to have loads of tap water with dinner, but I would definitely recommend buying a drinks package. Their drinks packages aren't crazily expensive, especially if you get a soft drinks one, but not even being able to get water at dinner. I see why for some people that's too far. I totally understand why that's too far. When it came for the time for us to do a mustard drill, they didn't tell us a time, which is strange, but it actually makes more sense as to what would happen in a real emergency. They gave you a rough time and then you had to wait for the signal. Then you would go back to your cabin, get your life jackets and go to the muster station. That's not gonna be the same after COVID, but at the time it was really, really bizarre to me. It was explained and it was explained in English, thankfully, but I've never done anything like that on a cruise. And at that point you sit there and you think, this is, this, this is, yeah, that's it, no words. Before I went on this cruise, I was concerned that I may be bored and I was never ever bored on this cruise. The entertainment was very different from American cruise lines because they don't really speak much English, but it was very, very visually appealing and very fun to watch. They had smoke machines, they had lasers, they had fire. I've never seen anything like it before. It was all very, very colorful and fitting with the Costa Cruises theme. I was definitely never bored on this cruise. So as far as those bad reviews go, I didn't see that, I wasn't bored. This cruise showed me that I do not cruise for the food. I went on this cruise, I had an amazing time and I would do this cruise over and over and over again and I would recommend this cruise. I definitely learned some lessons on this cruise. If you take a very, very cheap budget cruise, you can expect to pay for everything on board. At no point on this cruise did I see any free pizza or ice cream because Costa sell pizza and ice cream. If you're taking an Italian cruise with an Italian cruise line, I don't know about you, but for me, I expected there to be pizza everywhere and I didn't have a single slice of pizza during this entire week. Honestly, it's probably good for me and I ate better than I would at home, but still, it was different. This entire cruise, a week long cruise, including flights to Venice, cost me less than 400 pounds. I'll put the dollar amount on the screen. I can't work it out in my brain, but that's including flights. If you took off the flights, I think the cost per night was something around 35 pounds, British pounds. That's incredibly cheap. You couldn't stay in a budget hotel for that. You need to watch the Costa Luminosa ship tour next because if I hadn't been on this cruise, if I hadn't seen this, I probably wouldn't have believed it. It's unlike anything I've ever seen on a cruise ship before. Check that out next.